were to win the £60,000, what would you spend the money on? Well, I'd give fuck all to charity, that's for sure. No, no, just joking. I don't know. I reckon I'd buy myself a suit, first of all. You're a smart guy, Albert. <laughs> Have you not got a suit? No, well, I've got one, but it's not mine. Whose suit is it? Oh, no, I didn't steal it or anything. It's just my mate's. I borrowed it and said I haven't given it back yet. That's all. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> now, for £60,000, are you ready? Well, let's hope so. Jeb. What are you doing here? Yeah, well, what are you doing here? Well, uh, Darren told me to come today, didn't he? Strange. Darren told me to come in as well. Maybe he's, uh, maybe he's bought another lawn or something. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you writing there? Uh, it's a story in Chinese. See, I've got 400 words left to write. Aren't you meant to put them right to left? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's what I was going to say. I've got 400 words left to write and about 1,600 right to left, so... No, I got that first. Well, no, 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 you did not. No, you did not. I thought of it before you even arrived, so you cannot... I'm not, I'm not even writing a story in Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. I'm like writing a poem. What's that about? I'm allowed to write a poem. But what's your issue with me writing a poem? <laughs> well, it's just, you know, you're not the kind of guy that writes poems. Darren's the kind of guy that writes poems. Well, no, he's not. Darren's the kind of guy that writes death threats. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, you are right there, actually. I always get those two mixed up. That's, uh, that's probably why Jill from down the road doesn't speak to me anymore. What's it about? Oh, it's a haiku. So you are writing in Chinese. Oh, no, no, you got that mixed up as well. You see, the haiku is a form that originates from Japanese poetry, not Chinese. Is there There's... no milk? <coughs> what? Let's go to the Weetabix. Is there no milk? I don't know. No, look, what, what I was saying is that the haiku is a form of some Japanese poetry, not Chinese. It's characterised by three main... <laughs> yeah, characterised by three main <laughs> elements. Number one... I suppose I have to have the wheat picks dry, then. Or with water. <laughs> Actually, I know what I'll do. I'll have the wheat picks dry, and then have a glass of water. Pretty <laughs> clever. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. <coughs> How is it taking you that long to read? It's only three lines. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, what's not to get? Like this bit about fairy liquid, for example. Well, what's a bit about fairy liquid? 500 metres of fairy liquid, a pint of it's milk. a fucking shopping list, you dick. It's the other side. <laughs> Why don't you just do the shopping on the shopping list, rather than writing a poem on the back of the shopping list? I don't think it's my place to do Darren's shopping for him. He's not exactly if you're bollocking for buying him milk. And besides, now the next person does the shopping, he's going to come back with four burnt out corpses, <laughs> an undried tear, and a pair of red knickers blowing in the wind. <laughs> Darren does his own shopping. If he comes back with four burnt out corpses, that is for separate reasons. Darren doing his own <laughs> shopping? Darren's not the kind of guy that does his own shopping. Darren, get someone else to do his shopping. You just said the same thing three times? Yeah, well, it was a uh, bloody whatever you call a bloody it. Bloody whatever you call it. A haiku. A haiku doesn't just say the same thing three times. Now, if anything, a haiku takes. Oh, Albert, what are you doing here? I was just about to ask you the same question. Yeah, well, Darren told me to come today, didn't he? That's strange. Darren told me to come in today. Darren told me to come today as well. Fuck off. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> Basically, earlier, I said, maybe it's because he's bought another lawn or something. Because, you know, he always makes us mow the lawn. Uh, but I, I don't actually think it's that. <laughs> anyway, what have you got there? Oh, it's Darren shopping, isn't it? Why don't you take your shopping list? What? Oh, that? No, that's the first draft. <laughs> that's the first draft? How do you know that? <laughs> oh, well, I got here, and Darren was here, about to go for a run. He wrote me a shopping list to go to the shops with. 
And then he changed his mind about some stuff and wrote another one. <laughs> Darren going for a run? Darren's not the kind of guy that goes for runs. <laughs> Darren gets other people to go for runs. <laughs> well, what's the benefit of getting other people to go for runs? <laughs> I don't know. He's pretty sadistic though, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, Darren was about to go for a run and he was wearing all running gear and he said, I'm just about to go off for a run. I suppose that is fairly empirical evidence. <laughs> it wasn't a bag then? Oh, half a litre of fairy liquid, a can of deodorant, three fedoras and a pack of butter. Why didn't you get any milk? No, I went over budget on the fedoras. What are the fedoras for? In fact, what's any of this shit for? Except for the milk, which you didn't get. I mean, you try and fix it for fuck's sake. Just have them with water. Water's basically milk anyway, just without all the milky shit. <laughs> Hang on a second, mate, what are the fedoras for? I don't know. Didn't ask. They're not exactly part of the daily shop though, are they? Yeah. You know what he's like, Darren. Big Darren. Didn't want to challenge him. I've got a bad feeling we aren't here to mow the lawn. Or paint the walls. They do need painting. Well, surely you would say something about the fedoras. Surely they just sell fedoras down at Spa. There's a hat shop just next to Spa. Look. <laughs> You're not allowed to tell him that I told you, alright? Why would he tell you not to tell us? Well, he probably didn't want you to leave. Why? What is it? I can't say unless you promise not to leave. Well, don't do that now you said that. That's the very thing you shouldn't say if you don't want us to leave. Okay, I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, I won't leave. What is it? Jim? Oh, fine. Okay, look, if you must know, we're going to meet a bloke. <laughs> called Mr. Green. Mr. Green! Mr. Fucking Green! That was exclusively a criminal's name! No, 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 no. It, it could be a gardener's name. Not with the fedoras. <laughs> you don't garden in a fedora. Oh, Mr. Green and the fucking fedoras. I knew Darren was a bit dodgy, but I never thought he actually. Oh, fucking hell, please can't leave. No! Can't we just all leave? Look, calm down. It's probably nothing. And, and he pays us a load to mow his lawn, doesn't he? Exactly. That is exactly the point. Look at the state of this place. Do you think Darren really cares about the length of his grass? No, he never wanted us here to mow his fucking lawn, did he? Look, just, just say Mr. Green's a criminal. Say Mr. Green's a big, nasty criminal. Oh. Well, what does that matter? What's he going to do? Kill us? I mean, the likelihood would probably be higher than if he's just a guard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Weed killer can be pretty dangerous. <laughs> and frankly, mowing his lawn is fucking boring. <clears throat> I don't even feel like my wee spits anymore, to be honest. Quite frankly, even if we are going into gang warfare, what is the point in the hats? <laughs> they make us look professional and a bit scary. <laughs> I'd say more like semi-professional as a brass band player. And scary, yes, but in a sexual way. <laughs> Mr. Green, how are you doing? All right, Mr. Green, how's the missus? I mean, the hats are a secondary problem if you're going to ask Mr. Green, how's the missus? <laughs> it was you meant to say, all right, Mr. Green, how's your lifelong career of organised crime and extreme violence going? Hey, no one said extreme violence. How do you know Mr. Green's got a missus? Oh, well, I don't. But he's probably had one at some point. So he might say, I got rid of her. As in, left her, got rid of her. Or he might say, I got rid of her. <laughs> As in, got rid of her, got rid of her. <laughs> or he might answer, I'm gay, Albert, I'm a homosexual. <laughs> At which point, I, I would nod sincerely, until he bursts into raucous laughter and says, I had him, I had him. Or he doesn't, which is fine, just a bit unexpected. <laughs> or we might say, she's very well, on holiday to the Bahamas at the moment. Thanks for asking. As long as I'm wearing the hat, it'll be fine. <laughs> All right, Mr. Green, how's the missus? No, you can't say how's the missus. <laughs> I've just said how's the missus. If you say how's the missus, you'll think you haven't been listening. Oh, yeah. Good point. Um, all right, Mr. Green, how are you doing? A bit informal. Uh, <laughs> good day, Mr. Green. Fine afternoon, isn't it? It is raining outside. <laughs> it's fucking pouring outside, Mr. Green. I'd offer you an umbrella, but I haven't got one. Actually, you know what? You can have my hat if you like. It looks a bit shit anyway. Oh, here's my friend Henry. He's a poet. Oh, I'm not a poet. <laughs> then why are you writing poems? You've been no. writing poems, Henry. I wrote one poem that does not make Go on, let's hear it. <laughs> For 
burnt out corpses, an undried tear, a pair of red knickers blowing in the wind. <laughs> Don't recite that to Mr. Green! <laughs> Sounds like you're gonna shag his wife and murder his family. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you'd stop being Mr. Green. You can't afford to make those kind of mistakes. I'm not gonna make those kind of mistakes and actually meet Mr. Green, am I? I'm not gonna say think Mr. Green has stopped being Mr. Green. Darren said that he switches colour all the time. Apparently he was Mr. Red the last time they met. Why didn't you mention that? Darren told me about Mr. Red. Then why are you so surprised about Mr. Green? <laughs> well, I never thought it was red as in the colour red, I just thought it was Mr. Red. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah, what did he tell you then? Well, the other day when he showed me how to do the new lawnmower, Darren told me all the events of his life. Well, all of them? Well, no, not all of them, but uh, some of them. <laughs> Go on. All right, all right. Basically, what happened was, the first month of his life, pretty normal. Nothing out of the blue. Nice parents, gets breastfed. Not artificial or anything. But then uh, one day, it's Harvest Festival. You know, the one where you go put a can of beans on the altar, that kind of stuff. But you see, the, um, the Darrens are a very good Christian family. So Miss Darren doesn't put a can of beans on the altar. She fills up a whole hamper, you know, things made of wicker, fill it with straw, that kind of stuff. She fills up a whole hamper of beans and tells Miss Darren to take it to church. But Mr. Darren doesn't realise that little two-month-old Darren has slipped inside the hamper unawares. So then, one day, when the vicar opens up the hamper, presumably he's hungry, wants a can of beans for tea, I don't know, what does he find there? Little two-month-old Darren. Now, the vicar doesn't want him. He's got no idea whose he is. But luckily, <coughs> he's got a cousin who's a monk on a monastery on an island about three miles off the coast of Norfolk, who deals with this kind of thing. So he packs up little Darren, first class stamp and everything, ships him off to Norway. Fuck, oh, sorry, Norfolk. Now, Darren spends the next nine years of his life there, but he hates it there. He is not a spiritual child. Even the monks have diagnosed him as a uh, lacking of a soul. But then, uh, one day, it's his ninth birthday, and uh, the monk's taken down to sea. Now, Darren hasn't done anything for nine years. He spends most of his time stacking rocks. That's his main hobby. He's a rock stacker. But you see, he's not even a very good rock stacker. The most rocks he stacks is, I don't know, what would be a bad amount of rocks? 15, 15? No, that'd be quite impressive. Five rocks, five rocks. <laughs> so the monk's taken down to the sea on his ninth birthday for a, a baptisation, presumably. But just before they're about to dunk, in, dunk him into the sea, Darren is dead against this. He does not want this to happen. He wriggles out with the monk's hands and swims the three miles back to Norfolk. Now, the monks say, this is a miracle. And it is, because it's quite a long swim. But Darren's just wet, and he wants a towel. So he wanders around the town yeah, okay, looking okay, for a okay, towel. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. We don't need to know all the details of his life. Just give us the uh, general gist of it. Oh. Okay. Well, to cut a long story short, to give you guys the gist of a story which... I do know all the details. Yeah, right. After that, Darren embarks on a lifelong career of organised crime. <laughs> what about Mr. Red? Oh yeah, so a few weeks ago when I was mowing the lawn, Darren said, uh, in a few weeks, we're going to go meet Mr. Red. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Are you telling me that Darren has been involved in organised crime since the age of nine? That's what he said. Nine. How can you break the law when you're nine? I couldn't even walk when I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you can be a pickpocket or something. Oh, pickpocket's not a thing anymore. Um, I had my phone pickpocketed by a pickpocket last year, actually. <laughs> you told me you threw it into a canal so your dad would buy you a better one. Oh yeah. No, yeah, that is actually what happened. <laughs> Didn't either, but with the exact same phone for a pair of pickpocket-proof trousers. How can your trousers be pickpocket-proof? They don't have any pockets. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so... <coughs> So when did Mr. Red become Mr. Green, or oh. Green become Mr. Red? I'm thinking it was somewhere in between in being Mr. Red before <laughs> and Mr. Green now. No, sorry. That I heard in the transition phase was Mr. Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said, I heard in the transition phase as Mr. Yellow. You know, like traffic lights. <laughs> Where are you getting this information from? There's no information there, it's a joke. Do you know how traffic lights go red, yellow, green? No, I've done my bloody theory test. You don't have to do your theory test and no, traffic lights go red, yellow, green. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, but what I'm saying is there might be something in that. No, I'm telling you, Henry, it's a joke. It's a joke I just made up. Like the Chinese joke. No, <laughs> that was my joke. And wait, why are you laughing? You didn't even hear the joke. 
Oh, because you know. I, I don't know. You know, because they're yellow and that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's no, it's... It's because they write right to left. It's not because they're yet. They're not even yellow. What was the joke? Well, Basically, Henry said to me, I'm writing a story in Chinese. I've got 400 words left to write. And then I cleverly said, why aren't you meant to put them right to left? Oh. Why are you writing a story in Chinese? Oh, I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> why are you going around telling people you're writing a story in Chinese? <laughs> I said I'd written a story in Chinese, so I could then say, I've got 400 words left to write and about 1,600 right to left. Yeah, then anyway, Jeb interrupted and stole the punchline. Anyway, the traffic lights. Oh, did he steal the traffic lights one as well? Well, no, that was granted his own material. Is <laughs> <laughs> like, we sure that's a joke? Yeah, no, I know it's a joke, but are we sure there's not something more to it? Like, I don't know, um, Mr. Red, stop. Mr. Yellow, wait. Mr. Green, go. Bloody hell, he really has done his theory test. <laughs> Do you not see where I'm coming from? Yes, all right. Red and green are two cars on the standard UK traffic light. What can we possibly use that information for? I made Miss Yellow up, for God's sake. It's not even yellow on the traffic light, it's amber. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. I know who amber is. See, I told you there was something in this. Amber. <sighs> Come on, Jenny. Come on. Are you thinking of Umber? Umber? You know, that French bird. What French bird? The one that was your French exchange. Oh, Umber! <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no, I, I am thinking of Umber. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely not involved. She might be. She lives in Toulouse. The Toulouse connection. That is something Darren might say. She lives in Toulouse. She can't speak a word of English. And the last time I saw her, she was 12. She's categorically not involved in criminal operations with Darren. <laughs> well, I don't know any other Ambers. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's all my ambers. Mine too. Why are we looking for ambers, anyway? Well, you know, we had, we had Mr. Red, and we had Mr. Green, Amber's the only missing one, so... Oh, yeah. Could be a pedestrian crossing, then. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Has Henry started to write another poem? The Piano Crossing plays a tune of sorrow. It's not finished, all right. Quite good, that is. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually, a, that's actually a very moving image. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no, um... Oh, yeah, and that story you told about Darren, too, that was really well told, so, yeah, good, oh, good work, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You've always been able to spin a good yarn. Yeah, you have, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah? Well, I've got good stories, too, you know. Oh, oh we're, not, we're not saying you don't. Just... Yeah. Right, like, do you hear that story about my uncle's best friend? No. <laughs> my uncle's best friend, basically, dies in an ice skating accident. Oh, oh God, sorry. Sad. Yeah. The story's really about my uncle, oh, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Rewind a couple of weeks, my uncle lends his best friend a suit. His best friend's got a job, a job interview and he needs a suit and he doesn't have a suit. So my uncle lends him his suit, he wears it to the interview and then puts it in his cupboard. A couple of weeks later, when he still hasn't had the chance to give the suit back to my uncle, he gets a phone call. It's the people he had the job interview with. He has got the job for which he was interviewed. He decides, in celebration, to go ice skating, which is understandable. Even though it is only secretarial work, a celebration is due. <laughs> Unfortunately, during the hours allotted ice skating time, he dies in an ice skating accident. <laughs> <laughs> At the funeral, my uncle is visibly upset, like properly crying tears out his eyes and down his cheeks upset. Upset to the point that there was speculation as to whether they were not only best friends, but they were lovers. <laughs> The vicar had to have a word with him because he was spoiling the atmosphere. People were coming up to him and saying, Cheer up, mate. He's only dead. <laughs> it's not like he's... I mean, I don't really know how they would have finished that sentence, but you know what I mean. Anyway, a few years later, my old man's down the booze with my uncle and they've had a few drinks and it's getting late and that. And he turns to him, admits to him that, well, the reason he was so upset was that the suit that he lent this bloke to two weeks previously was a suit he'd been sent to the Undertaker's in to be buried. <laughs> My uncle hadn't only lost his best friend, <laughs> he'd lost his best friend in his finest linen suit. Ridiculous. All right, Darren. All right, Darren. <laughs> right, sit down. Now, 
<laughs> the law. I've decided to grow it out. See, short look just isn't working. Now, put on your hats. Who is this man? <laughs> Mr. Green? Anyone else? Mr. Red? <laughs> You've just said the same thing. <laughs> well, no, because, because Albert said Mr. Green, and then I said Mr. Red. <laughs> yes, the same bloody thing. Oh no, wait, uh, I probably should have started with this bit actually. Right, so just ignore all of this for now. <laughs> yes. Right, so I'm afflicted by an extremely rare condition called colour deafness. Now, it's not as bad as it sounds. I can tell the difference between Blue and orange, for example, very easily. Yellow and violet, no problem. It's just when it comes to green and green. <laughs> Sorry, no, uh, uh, red and red. No? Uh, green, red, is that it? Well, I wouldn't be able to tell you, would I? Oh, you <laughs> Find that funny, Jib. Do I amuse you? Not really. <laughs> Good. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I believe it would be easier to refer to our man, Mr. Green, by his birth name, Mr. Romanov. Now, who was that man? Mr. Romanov? <laughs> Nearly. Good. <laughs> and what is this? The shop. Oh, well done. <laughs> you can read. Now move your eyes 30 centimetres up and use the fucking clue I've given you. Ah, from the Weber. <laughs> <laughs> no, do in line, all of us, Jeb. What the fuck is the new Weber? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, it's just what you, you've written. No, what I've written is the North Warrington Book Emporium. <laughs> Clearly. Now, do you see what I'm getting at? You want us to buy you some books? <laughs> do I have to fucking spell it out for you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, in late June, the Russian billionaire Alexander Romanov, a man who's under investigation for human trafficking, drug smuggling and unconsensual murder <laughs> by the MI5, the MI6, the regular police, the fire service and the Bank of England <laughs> bought the North Warrington Book Emporium. Now, what would be the point in a man who's allegedly, but also definitely, made his money from drug smuggling, human trafficking and unconsensual murder what would be the point in him buying a high street bookshop? Did he look like the kind of stick man that has an avid interest in literature? I mean, it, it was hard to tell. No, he doesn't. The reason he bought this bookshop is so he can launder all his illegal money before the MI5, the MI6, the regular police, the fire service and the Bank of England find enough evidence to lock him up for the rest of his life. Now, any questions so far? Um, Darren, uh, where exactly do we fit into this? Well, clearly, I haven't got to that bit yet, have I? <laughs> now, don't ask me how I know, because I couldn't tell you, but there is going to be a five minute window today between 12 o'clock and 12.05 where a briefcase containing 750,000 sovereign pounds will be deposited somewhere between G&H in the historical fiction section of the North Warrington Book Emporium. Darren, um, this plan, 
it, it sounds great. <laughs> I've won. Love it. Alternative, <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. I think it's definitely wacky. <laughs> Just, uh, why, why do you want us to do it? I mean, we've got no experience in the uh, crime industry. We're sensitive. We're wimpish. The only job I've ever done is mowing your lawn, for God's sake. Do you think I, Darren, know anyone that could feasibly be seen in a North Warrington booking pool? <laughs> Let alone the historical fiction section. Now, you said it yourself, you're a bunch of wimpish nerds, <laughs> right? All you've got to do is walk in, do a bit of browsing, buy a couple copies of Horrible History or whatever the fuck you call it, <laughs> and then walk out with a briefcase like it's your library bag. It's simple. Then, um, and again, I am not trying to pick holes in your plan or anything, because, as I said earlier, oh, I love it. <laughs> but but why, why do we have to wear the, um, gangster hats? <laughs> well, they look cool, don't they? No, yeah, sorry, of course, of course. And just one more, uh, tiny thing. You, you don't think we're going to get arrested or unconsensually murdered, do you? <laughs> First of all, Jeb, you're not going to get arrested, are you? Because what's Mr Romanov going to do? Pick up the phone and be like, Hello, police, someone's stolen my dirty illegal money. <laughs> no, <laughs> and you're not going to get unconsensually murdered because he's done this whole thing to clear his name in the first place. And what is a drop in the ocean to a man who's already got an ocean? <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, to a billionaire, what's 750,000 pounds? Drop in the ocean. Exactly. <laughs> so, are you in? I didn't realise we had a choice, Darren. Of course you have a choice. What do you think I was going to do? Kill ya? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, you can leave if you want. It just won't get you cut. Cut? Let's say 5% <coughs> between you. That's 12,500 each. Obviously I'd like to give you more, but I've got the burden of protecting the money. 10% and we're in. Don't fucking negotiate with me. <laughs> I'd give you 10%, but the maths would be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take five. Albert, glad to have you on board. Right, all this talk of money has worked me up a bit of a sweat. I'm going to go and have a bath. <laughs> it would probably have been the run that worked up the sweat, if we're honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Why the fuck would you agree to that, Albert? Oh, that's good money, that yeah, is. For a quiz show, not for robbing a shitting oligarch! I'm not very good at general knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> what? I wouldn't win on a quiz show. I'm not very good at general knowledge. That is not the point! <laughs> anyway, we cheat. You're not allowed to cheat. We're allowed to 750 grand of an oligarch. Yeah, it's a grey area. Look, <laughs> you're a poet. I'm not very clever in an intellectual sense. And, uh, and, and, and Jeb, uh, I don't know why anyone hasn't mentioned it yet, but your name is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> None of us are going to make any money. Uh, Unless we resign ourselves to a life of crime. No, just... Turn your phone off. No, oh, just my wife, one of those people who does odd jobs. Mow a lawn, rob an oligarch. Paint someone's garden fence, steal the Mona Lisa. Why would you be painting fences if you'd already successfully stolen the Mona Lisa? Oh, it'd just be a life of crime, wouldn't it? Look, we can't unshake Darren's hand because his hand is un it's, it's already been shaken. We can't unshake his hand because it's shaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All, all right, Albert. Forget it. Look, Henry. Henry, if you want to go up to Darren while he's running his bath and retract your shake... No, I'm not going to go retract my shake from Darren in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Right. So I reckon me and Jeff distract the bookshop woman with one of your poems, or she go around to the book section and seek out the briefcase. Excuse me, 
Sorry, missus. This is a bookshop, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so so you like books and stuff. <laughs> oh, wait, um, maybe you would care to uh, hear our friend's poem? Yeah, it's quick, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say it's on the, on the quick side of things. Um, sh shall I, uh... Yeah, go on, you read it. Okay, uh, four burnt out corpses. <laughs> uh, actually, why don't I do the next line? Yeah, okay. No, actually, wait, why don't you read the next line? Yeah, actually, that, that, that's probably better. Um, an un... Actually, I might as well start again now, really, because uh, we are halfway through anyway, so... Uh... <laughs> Four burnt-out corpses. An undried tear. Oh, no. I could have done that line. It was the end line that I didn't want to read. That's not my fault, is it? And a pair of... Oh, do you want to hear a story instead? It's about my uncle's best friend. <laughs> I was dead. Yeah, it is a bit insensitive, actually. Oh, it was an ice skating accident, you see. Oh, you know what? I'll have to tell you another time. Uh, sorry about Thanks that. Thanks for having us. Nice lads, aren't they? You really empathise with them, don't you? They're innocent, they're naive. They've still got that glimmer of hope in their eyes. See, I remember when I was that age, the old thing was Exciting. I worked for a man called Upton Smith. Now he was a pathological liar. He'd make up the most ridiculous backstories for the most simple jobs. He'd send me down to the shops telling me I was a decoy for CIA agents parked down his drive. <laughs> And then one day, he told me he was going straight, and that I should too. In fact, he told me that if he came back to town and I hadn't gone straight, he'd put me in the fucking ground. I never really worked out why, but it didn't surprise me. I mean, he was very violent, like really creatively violent. He'd tell me that the knife was his paintbrush and that the human body was his canvas. Which kind of makes sense if he was like one of those modern artists that produces <laughs> really fucking hideous works of art. <laughs> I haven't seen him since he left. He started writing low quality fiction. I only managed about three pages of Superman at Trafalgar. <laughs> the amount of shit he told me, I would not be surprised if he was trying to pass it off as non-fiction. <coughs> there was a rumor going around a few years back that he scalped a publisher when they turned down his book. But I don't know if that's true. Although, he did once put a nail through my hand when I overseasoned his risotto. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sorry, uh, that Mr. Romanov shite was entirely made up. <laughs> Obviously, <clears throat> it was made up. So I don't mean to patronize all of you I don't usually do that kind of thing, but it was too easy. I mean, they would believe anything, those lads. I told that funny-looking bloke, Jeb, 
that I was accidentally given to my local church in a harvest <laughs> festival <laughs> around the world, and he believed me. I told him that I swam three miles across the North Sea when I was nine, <laughs> and he believed me. All three of them genuinely believed that I was coloured there. <laughs> but you know what it is that Mr. Romanov shot wearing the hats, Mr. Green stealing off the big guy. It's like Upton shit, really. Adds a bit of romance to the old thing. But there is nothing romantic about picking up 200 grams of speed that was deposited five minutes earlier in the North Warrington Brooklyn morning <laughs> by a middle-aged man that goes by the nickname of Skag Steve. <laughs> there is nothing romantic about the fact that the reason why we have to pick up in a bookshop, the reason we have to go through this whole fucking malarkey is because a man who openly refers to himself as Skag Steve doesn't want to be seen in public with me. Oh shit. I forgot my lighter. I'll be back. Well, that was a nightmare. Sorry, I swear the B13 went through Crendon the last time I got it. <laughs> well, uh, at least the um, at least the heist went well. Uh, yeah, the heist was easy. Super easy heist. <laughs> I'd do that again. I'd do that again today. Mr. Romanov has been jollily rogered. <laughs> yeah, he's probably sitting at home right now. I don't know, sulking or something. <laughs> Yeah, look at that, a million pounds. Yeah. Oh, well, obviously it's not quite a million, but still. Oh yeah, I know it's only 750,000, but what I'm saying is the briefcase looks pretty nice too. <laughs> That's a 250,000 pound briefcase. <laughs> Yeah, look, maybe I got some of the calculations wrong. But what I'm saying is, that's a lot of money. We have stolen a lot of money. You're not slightly terrified. Why? You just stole all this money off a human trafficker. I get it now. What do you get, the fact, about, the fact that we're about to be executed by an oligarch? No, 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 the red and green shit. It makes sense now. <laughs> no, Darren's already explained it. It's because he's coloured there. <laughs> no, I'm thinking that's not a thing, Albert. No, it's because Mr. Red, Mr. Green, was a human trafficker. <laughs> uh, human traffic? <laughs> oh, that is severely distasteful. <laughs> I'm the one who came up with it. I'm not the one who's human trafficking. You're not slightly terrified that you did steal all this money from someone that is human trafficking? Yeah, slightly, I guess. Yeah, Albert? Well, probably. A bit. Yeah, good, because, um. Well, I'll cut to the chase, I suppose. Uh, I didn't take the money. What? I didn't take the money. No, the money's there. It's sitting right no, there. No, 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 that's the wrong briefcase. Look, I found the right briefcase. It was right there in between G&H and the historical fiction section, but look, I didn't take it. You know, this one I just stole from some old man who'd fallen asleep in the reading corner or wherever they could it. He'd fallen asleep into a book about World War One, and I took his briefcase. Look, I'm sorry, yeah, I am, but you'll fuck me in the long run. Yeah, I'm not going to get murdered. <laughs> this is like one of those jokes, right? Well, well no, no, not exactly, Albert. Well, I mean, at least we've still got £250,000 worth of briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd ruin it somehow, poet scum. Oh, look, I've got to make myself all interesting and steal the wrong briefcase. It's got nothing to do with being interesting. What is it to what do, is it do with We're not getting murdered. We were never going to get murdered by Mr. Romanov. But what about fucking Darren? Yeah, what happens when we, what happens when we say to Darren, oh, sorry, Darren, we haven't got £250,000, we've just got... I don't even know what have we what got. What do you mean? What's in the briefcase? Oh, no, pencils, paper, a laptop. Oh, lucky. fine. What happens if we say to Darren, oh, sorry, Darren, we haven't got £750,000. Just got, oh, I don't know, pencils, paper, a laptop, if we're lucky. It'll <laughs> <laughs> kill us. Only figuratively. What does that mean? Well, it's only going to kill us in the way that you, you might say, oh, my dad's going to kill me. It's going to kill us in the way that Mr. Fucking Romanov would. Mr. Fucking Romanov was never going to actually kill us or kill us. 
figuratively. Mr. Fucking Romanov was never gonna actually kill us or kill us figuratively. But Darren's got no reason not to kill us. Yeah, accidentally taking the wrong briefcase is not a killable offence. But it doesn't look like accidentally, does it? It doesn't look like we've accidentally taken the wrong briefcase. It looks like we've taken the right briefcase, sent the money off to France, and then nicked some poor old bloke's briefcase to replace it with. I mean, we might as well have done exactly that, so there'd be some money waiting for us in France, the unlikely scenario of us surviving. In fact, that's what I was thinking of doing. But then I thought, Henry, sensible Henry, wouldn't approve because he'd think we'd get murdered or whatever. But now we're in exactly the same situation, just worse off! No, 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 it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Let's just, let's just write an apology letter and go home. That's what you do when you play FIFA, and it makes it look more suspicious. I only live down the road. I've seen Darren down the fucking barbers before. Oh, dear Darren, we're sorry, but the briefcase, which we haven't opened yet, doesn't have any of the money that's supposed to be inside it. Let's open it then. Darren's the only one who can open a locked briefcase. Well, how's Darren going to open a locked briefcase? He'll open it with a hammer, <coughs> and then he'll kill us with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I do not mean that in a figurative way. I mean, it, it would be fine if he killed us in a figurative way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that expression, yeah? So, well, how's it go? Uh, yeah, out of the pan and into the fire. That is not a positive expression! Who's to blame Albert for this shit? Yeah, he was the one who agreed to it in the first place. Blame him! I didn't agree to this shit. This is not the shit I agreed to. <laughs> I agreed to different shit. <laughs> oh, well done, lads. Right, I'm just gonna have a couple wee bix and then, uh, I've got something I need to tell you. Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what, fuck that. Uh, I've got something I need to tell oh, you. Oh, we've right? got something to tell you first. <clears throat> no, uh, I've got something I need to tell you. Honestly, Darren, it's the briefcase. Yeah, the briefcase. It yeah, hasn't got, got £750,000 in it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? How do you know it hasn't got £750,000 in it? How do you know it hasn't got £750,000 in it? Because the Mr. Romanov thing. <clears throat> It's a lie. Made up. You really think some billionaire's leaving hundreds of thousands of pounds around a high street bookshop? <laughs> no! <laughs> I lied. To make the whole thing a bit more exciting for you lads. <laughs> Is that a crime? <coughs> <laughs> no, in the briefcase is, as you somehow already know, 200 grams of speed. There you go. <laughs> but how do you know that? And what is going on? What the fuck is going on? He took the wrong briefcase, Darren. He was scared of getting killed by Mr. Romanov. There is no Mr. Romanov. Oh, I didn't know that, Darren, did I? So you're telling me there's still 200 grams of speed in the North Warrington Book Emporium? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds like it, Darren. Shit! Oh. Shit! Oh, shit. Yes, yeah, Steve, there's been a ma- Oh, sorry. It's gag, Steve. <laughs> yeah, there's been a massive fuck-up. You need to retrieve the briefcase, like, right now. No, no, I can't explain. Just do it now. And whose briefcase is this oh, then? Just some old man's. You stole a briefcase <laughs> of an old man. <laughs> Even by my standards, that is sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. And what's in it? I don't know. Oh, uh, pencils, paper, a, a laptop if we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> How does he know? Him? <laughs> How does he know and you don't? Well, he doesn't know. Uh, Albert was speculating. No, we, <laughs> we thought you could be the only one that could open it, Darren. Well, you are right there, because briefcases are somewhat speciality, right? Lucky I always have a screwdriver on top of the fridge just for these kind of situations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Right, uh... Right, uh... I'm gonna leave this one with you lads. <laughs> and, um... Uh, if you need me... I'll be in fucking Belgrade or something. Get out of my fucking way, Jim. <laughs> well, well done, mate. I don't, I don't get it. What's in it? It's just papers and stuff, like I said. <laughs> what does Dan do? Fuck off to Belgrade for then? <laughs> What's Superman at Passchendaele? <laughs> Who's Upton <laughs> Smith? Holy <laughs> shit, it's a manuscript! What? It's a manuscript for a, for a book! We've done a heist on a bookshop and come back with a fucking book. <laughs> I mean, by no means the most unlikely thing to come back with. What kind of a book is Superman at Passchendaele? Well, it's, it's historical fiction, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that man, he must be uh, uh, Upton Smith, and, and he, he was in the historical fiction section reading an historical fiction book with his manuscript in his briefcase. So he's going to have to write it again? No, you can't rewrite history. <laughs> no, 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 you can rewrite history, it's just generally considered a bad thing to do. But there's nothing against rewriting historical fiction. What? Well, rewriting historical fiction is like writing a second draft of Superman at Passchendaele, but rewriting history is like saying, I don't know, uh, Queen Victoria invented the PlayStation. I don't know. <laughs> Look, as I said, this is an original manuscript. This, this could be valuable. Right. So what you're saying is, we give this Upton Smith bloke a bell and say, give us 20 grand each or your manuscript goes in the shredder. <laughs> but then again, like Jeb says, <coughs> why is Darren fucked off to Belgrade? Yeah, he did seem to think it was a pretty good idea to fuck off to Belgrade. Or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Belgrade or something. I don't know, I don't know why Darren's fucked off to Belgrade. If I knew why Darren fucked off to Belgrade, I probably would have fucked off to Belgrade. But I don't know the means of fucking off to Belgrade, first of all. And second of all, we have got the original manuscript to a book. It would have taken years for him to write this shit. Look. Let's just ring him up and say, can we negotiate a reward? Well, I just don't get it. First, I'm the one that wants to do the heist. And you're the one that wants to not do the heist. Then you pull a heist on a heist, and I'm angry that you've done a heist on a heist. Then the heist which you pulled on the heist was barely even a heist, and we've come out of it having done some other kind of heist by accident. And now Darren's driven off to Europe, and obviously Jeb just sits there saying stuff every now and again. I don't just sit here saying stuff every now and again. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. It's fine, let's just forget about the heist. Yeah, forget about all that. Look, all we've done is stumbled across a man's book, and we want a reward. But why were you so against the Mr. Romanov heist? Well, Mr. Romanov was going to kill us. So. If, if he'd been real. Yeah, Mr. Romanov, if he'd been real, was going to kill us. Upton Smith is just some old man who writes books. Look, we've got his number here anyway. Let's just give him a ring and see what he says. Hi there. Look, oh no, I prefer to get unknown. <laughs> Look, I've got your book. Oh no, not Supernatural Falcon. No, I'm not a fan. Uh, no, Supernatural Passchendaele? Yeah, your, your manuscripts. Yeah, look, I'd like to negotiate a reward. No, I'm not telling you where I live. Look, bring £60,000 to 41 Church Road, Prendon, or Superman gets the shredder. Come <laughs> on! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, Albert, that was a bit extreme. <laughs> oh, come off it. He's just some old bloke who writes books. Look. When I'm in, you're out. When I'm out, you're in. Get in or get out. Yes, I'm, I'm in, obviously. You just need to make it sound quite so much like a kidnapping. Sorry. <laughs> you, you know what? What? That story that I told about Darren's life, it probably wasn't true, was it? <laughs> no, probably not. I think this Upton Smith bloke is going to kill us. What? What? Upton Smith. He's going to kill us if we don't get out of here. What are you saying that for? This kind of stuff. It's not real life stuff, is it? These kind of things happen in Darren's stories. In real life, you don't blackmail someone to get money. You get arrested. Or, or, or worse, killed. And you really think there's some author just lying around in the North Warrington Book Emporium at exactly the same time, in exactly the same five minute window, and that coincidentally Darren has legged it to the other side of Europe the moment he finds out who it is. Are you really going to get in the way of a, of a guy who Darren, big fucking scary Darren, is afraid of? This feud isn't with us. This feud might be with us after you told him that Superman's going to get the shredder if he doesn't give us £60,000. <laughs> Fuck off, Jeb. Do some more jokes. Yeah. I think I will, actually. <laughs> Fuck off, that is. All right. I'll see you uh, around. All right, I'll see you around, Jeb.
Henry, I'll see yeah, you. Yeah, see you around, Jim. Who'd have thought? Jeb. Jeb with all the jokes will be first to bottle it when things get serious. Yeah. First Darren, now Jeb. I always thought me and you were the, you know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> we're in it since the beginning is what I mean. Yeah, I suppose. And you know, the mix up in the bookshop, it doesn't matter. We've come off better for it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's funny how things work out, isn't it? And even though you write poems, I always thought you had, what's the word? I'm not quite sure, Albert. <laughs> Courage. Backbone. Even though you talk like a nonce, even though you behave like a nonce sometimes, what I find, what it comes down to in the end is backbone. Well, no, I've got backbone. Yeah, you've got backbone. Yeah, but I talk and behave like a nonce. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's just the poetry stuff and, and the mix-up in the bookshop. That's not the behaviour of someone that outwardly has backbone. But inwardly, you've got more backbone than any man. <laughs> Albert, we should leave. What? After I've said all that? Yeah, Deb's right. You've got no backbone at all. Outwardly or inwardly. No, you can say what you like about me, but... No, I've got a backbone, I'm not staying. I've got a backbone set in stone and I'm well, you fucking poet. Look, I'm going to go without you. Yeah, don't I'm, not, I'm not leaving, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I've just doubled my profits. I'm over the moon. Fucking come on. Right, I'm off yeah. the moon. Don't expect anything from me, though. I'll be living in a house in Spain with multiple Spanish women. Right, see you later, Albert. And I'll call me Prince Albert. Yeah, see you later. And I'll get a little Spanish man to play the trumpet as I walk down to breakfast. <laughs> Fuck all the charity, that's for sure. No, no, just joking. I don't know, I reckon I'll buy myself a suit first of all. You're a smart guy, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not got a suit? No, well, I've got one, but it's not mine. Whose suit is it? Oh, no, I didn't steal it or anything. It's just my mates. I borrowed it and still haven't given it back yet. That's all. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. 60,000 pounds. Are you ready? Well, let's hope Thank you all so much for coming. We all really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, shows like ours really can't get off the ground at the Fringe unless you guys all go and tell all your friends, tell anyone you know in Edinburgh to come and see our show. Or if you liked it, please go and tweet about it. Tweet at Double Edge Drama and follow our goons page on Facebook. So if you if you did like it, please go do that. And if you uh, if you didn't like it, then well, lie about it. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. We'll see you later. Bye bye.